Now, as someone who is an avid collector of NES games, I am aware of the unlicensed ones as well, some of which can be really bizarre. But man, this game would be a doozy for our collectors. I mean, I've read other gaming stories over the years, most notably the NES Godzilla creepypasta. But this game is like a mix of the first-person perspective from Fester's Quest, the game rarely not crashing like Chiyo Man 2, the occasional screamers from EXE games, and apparently, like many stories, curses you after playing it, depending on how far you make it into the game. By this point, video game creepypasta is a pretty cookie cutter, but can also be entertained, and how some moments can be horrifying to visualize. Overall, the story is alright, but there are other stories that, for me, capture a more terrifying scenario in my mind. Ah, the Nintendo Entertainment System, one of the most classic and revolutionary consoles, filled with iconic games such as Super Mario Bros., Metroid, and Duck Hunt. However, inside the NES's vast array of games, there are some lesser known ones, even some particular ones. One such example is a game called Lucifer's Manor. Lucifer's Manor was a game created by a small company called the Brockletons and they were essentially trying to make one of the very first horror games ever. They published the game in small quantities, so it is extremely hard to find a copy today, if there are even any still in existence. If you do somehow find one to tell if it is legit, look for these obvious signs. The cover picture is a dead giveaway. As unlike the majority of the NES library, it looks as though a second grader drew all over in our class. The cart is black with little specks of red all over, along with some scratches and an X formation along the sides. These effects were added to make the game seem creepier, although I don't see how bad drawings are creepy. Before I continue, I cannot stress this enough. It is strongly advised that you do not play the game. Saying that, I do realize that at least one of you will go out on an expedition to find this game. So I'm just going to break down what happens within, hopefully to lessen your curiosity. The game starts with the baby blue, the Brockletons logo, appearing on the screen. Then it goes to the tile. Some cheesy 8-bit scary music plays, and the game starts. The game starts out in a third-person perspective, in which you, as the main character, simply have to walk up to the door of the mayor and open it. After doing so, the game switches to a first-person perspective, which is surprising considering this game came out in the beginning of the NES era. You go down a hall and strange music plays, somewhat resembling a pitch shift 8-bit edition of a song straight from the movie Psycho. There are doors scattered around the walls along with foreign texts, believed to be in Latin, sprawl across. Every door leads to a room that contains a different key. Once you find the key, you leave the room and continue on to the next door. This process continues until exactly the ninth door. After you get the key from that door, the music starts getting softer and softer, and soon all you can hear is white noise. You then notice that the game starts looking worse and worse, as if the game is degrading before your eyes. After this, a face, which is thought to be the main character's, appears on the screen saying, Lucifer's Mare, and then a few words in Latin which roughly translate to, Hell Awaits. The game then crashes, deleting all save data upon reinsertion of the cart. Sometimes, albeit very rarely, the game doesn't crash and you are allowed to keep playing. When you keep on walking through the hall, you'll notice that the words start changing from Latin to English, saying nonsense like, he stole it, not me, dinner tray, and the ship is here, men, to your places. However, as you go farther through the hall, the words get more and more disturbing. Phrases such as, off of his head, end my suffering, and please lord, stop with the torment, among others begin to appear. Amid the sea of puzzling sentences, you will see this frequent message. Kayamu is here. Nobody for sure knows who Kayamu is, or why she is mentioned so much in these writings. Sometimes, 
As you are walking through the hallway, a girl's face will show up on the wall and scream. This is who most people believe Kaimu is. You'll also notice the occasional bloodstains on the keys, and some mysterious writing in an unknown language inside the rooms. After the 15th room, the screen starts shaking and you move more slowly. At this point, the girl is shown full body in front of a faraway door. You start moving slower and slower as she gets closer and closer until she is right in front of you. She screams and the screen goes black. The game resumes after a few seconds inside of a strange green room. When you open the door, you'll notice you are in a completely different hallway. The walls now contain what are believed to be hanging bodies with slash marks all over them to accompany the writing. The music changes to a much creepier tune and the bodies start swaying. The words on the walls get worse and worse, saying phrases such as, What type of cruel god would do this? And, I'll do anything, let me out. There is also more mention of Kaimu, with phrases such as, Kaimu is waiting for you, and, there is no escape from Kaimu. Occasionally, Kaimu will appear in the distance, watching your every move. The new doors you go into all have more difficult spots to find the keys. After about 8 more doors, the walls start glowing as if there's a fire. Once you move about 12 more doors, you will see the main door, adorned with spikes and radiant flames. If you have collected all of the keys, you automatically begin to approach it. The elegant inserted in, and the door opens. All that is inside is an endless black room. A void. Kayamu walks up and says, I am the... And the game crashes. All saves are lost, and nobody knows what happens next. Now that you know what happens, I urge you not to play the game. Coincidence or not, all who have played the game have met troublesome fates. The people who didn't get to see the second part had lesser things happen to them. For some people, their grades plummeted, or they got in trouble with the law for crimes they didn't commit. For some people, some even went broke or lost a job due to mysterious, unforeseen circumstances. However, for the people who actually did see the second part, the majority had much more severe problems. Some of the lucky people died, or had someone they loved died. For the most part, the other people would go insane, speaking of how Kaimu was hunting them, trying to kill them, and how she's torturing them. Some of them were even found hanging, covered in self-inflicted blade wounds. Now, I would be lying if I said that everyone who played the game or reached a hidden second part met misfortune, but these coincidences are undeniable, and it's truly not worth the risk. So as I said, if you ever find this game, it is advised that you do not play it and immediately destroy it. That is, unless you have a death wish.